Howdy guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to go over a fun topic that, uh, that uh, of some parallels between King David and Jesus. And uh, we're jumping at, to uh, 2 Samuel 6.14 and we're going to start. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might and David was wearing a linen ephod. Now, they were, uh, for David, they were just bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. And David, um, as king, he would have his kingly clothes on, you know, how you would expect kings to act in, in uh, certain areas. But David comes down among the people and starts dancing and celebrating with the people in front of the Ark of the Covenant as it's coming in to uh, the city. And he, no, he's not naked. He had on linen clothes, okay? If uh, it would be unheard of back then for David to have done such a thing and, and people, uh, the people around him not go crazy. But anyway, so he's, you know, right there with all the people, his own people dancing and celebrating the coming of the ark, which would be symbolic of celebrating God's salvation coming into the city. Now, let's go to... Uh, verse 15. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord and sh with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. Now, let's go to uh, uh, Philippians. Now, we went over this the other day in our last video, but I just want to show you the parallel. So, King David, who was supposed to be above all his constituents, all the people, lowers himself to come mingle with, you would say, like the peasants of his day. Now let's look at uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 7. Let us let this be in, be in you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus Christ, who is our true king, ruling from heaven, lowered himself to come live among us. Now, I want to also state, too, is that the way he humbled himself so much greater than David could have ever imagined, but lowered himself nonetheless like David. They, uh, when Jesus died on the cross, if you read Deuteronomy 21-23, it says that those that hang from a tree are cursed. So Jesus was cursed for our iniquity. We, stri we considered him cursed, okay, and stricken, as it says in Isaiah 53. And then, if you uh, go to Genesis 3:17, or yeah, 3:17 and 18, I want to cover this too, just to show you how much our Lord humbled Himself for us. Uh, Genesis 3:17 and 18. Then Adam said, "Because then to Adam he said, now this is God speaking, Adam and Eve had just sinned, and watch what happens. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, in other words, briars, it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb of the field. So, the, really the first thing God curses when Adam and Eve sin, when we sin against God, is the cursing of the ground that brings forth thorns. Jesus Christ, when he came to die for us, had a crown of thorns thrust upon his head. He wore our curse that we caused to happen on his head. I can't imagine that God lowered himself anything anything like that. Now let's go back to uh, Samuel and see some more comparisons. We're on verse 16. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw the king, saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord and she despised him in her heart. So Saul Saul's daughter, this is uh, Saul, uh, excuse me, uh, David, I believe it's his first or second wife, but Saul gives him Michal in marriage. And uh, so she was born 
as a princess. Her dad was a king for her whole life. So her whole life is nothing but luxury. She is the privileged few. She knows how to look down at everyone else. She knows how to how a, a person of authority is supposed to you know conduct themselves around the peasant folks. You see what I'm getting at? And so she looks down and sees David dancing with among the people and she sticks her nose up at him and she's looking down and the symbolism couldn't be better or it couldn't be more ironic. She's literally high up sitting in a window looking down scoffing at King David and those around her. So she views herself as what you would say superior to those beneath her. Superior to the common folks. So let's go to Luke 18. Okay, this is Luke 18, 9 through 14. And he spoke this parable, Jesus. Some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So Jesus spoke this parable to... Uh, to some who trusted in themselves and despised others. They thought themselves were so exalted and righteous and despised all of those they saw beneath them. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One Pharisee, another tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with, thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as to raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So you notice the symbolism here? Who does Mikhail, or Mikhail, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, I don't know how they really pronounce it in Hebrew. How does Mikhail uh, sound like compared to the Pharisees? It's pretty similar, right? So the Pharisees looked down on others because they thought themselves more righteous than all those around them, than them tax collectors. And so they stuck their noses up to all those they viewed beneath them. And Jesus says, he who humbles himself will be lifted up. And those that exalt themselves will be humbled. So Mikhail represents the Pharisees. David, in this instance, represents Jesus. He was humbling himself among the people. Now let's go to back to 2 Samuel. This is verse 17. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for them. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So David offers sacrifices to God. And Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice to God. Now, I want y'all to think about this too. The Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be where the sin atonement was done. They were supposed to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. That's where the sin atonement was supposed to be done. Okay, so the so the bringing the ark, offering sacrifices, ark you can represent the forgiveness of sins and salvation of God. Jesus literally done all this on Passover, the day that God delivered His people out of Egypt when they spread the blood of the Lamb on the on the top of their door in Egypt. So Jesus also would give the ultimate sacrifice. Verse eighteen, and when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings. He blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. So David blesses them. He blesses those around him. Now let's look at go to John 15. John 15, 26. Okay. John 15, 26. Now this is Jesus speaking. And he's talking about when once he goes, once he dies, is risen, and ascends to heaven. Watch what happens. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So Jesus, after his sacrifice has been made, 
He blesses all those who put their faith in Him with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit He sends from the Father. Now let's go back to 2 Samuel. Then he dis, dis, uh, just uh, David. Then he dis, distributed, sorry, distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both women and men, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Let's go to John chapter six, verse forty-eight. <clears throat> John six forty-eight. I, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Your father ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will shall live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So Jesus is the bread of life. We are all fed on those who put their faith in Christ Jesus. All are eating of that bread of life, the eternal life that he's given us. So he also feeds his sheep, feeds those who put their faith in him. Let's go back to 2 Samuel. Now we're at verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, now, I want you to notice something. So David comes into his household, his own household, where he's expected to be able to bless them, to be to rejoice with them. Jesus came unto his own people. And those should have been the people that recognized him. Those should have been the ones, the leaders should have been the ones that didn't realize it. The, were the ones that studied the law. They should have known who he was. But what happens? Let's watch what happens to David. And uh, Michal says, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So, so King David didn't keep on his kingly uniform, his crown of you know glory and everything else. He lowered himself among his people, put on linen clothes like they were wearing, and was dancing and joyous. And she looks down on that and says, What kind of a king are you? to dance and to act this way in front of these people. You're supposed to be a di held at a different level. This is not what a king is supposed to do. Now let's go to... Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll continue and then we'll go to the next part. So David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me, instead of your father, all of his house, to appoint me ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Ruler, appoint me ruler over the people of Israel. Dang it, I'm sorry I'm messing up reading. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore I will play music before the Lord, and I will be even more undignified than this, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. So those that are lowly, he says he will debase himself even more for, his, for the Lord, he was the one that was anointed by God to be the king. Jesus is the true anointed one from heaven. And he says that he will debase himself even more in the maid service. Those of low rank, those that are looked down upon, will love him even more. Now let's go to Luke. Okay, we're at Luke 7.39. 7, yes, Luke 7.39. Okay. Now, when the now this this is uh, Jesus when he comes to a house, and this very sinful woman we don't really know what she was uh, sinful for that I know of. Not that I know of anyway. I may have mis overlooked it, but anyways, so this sinful woman comes to Jesus, and she starts putting fragrant oil on Jesus and tending to it. Now, listen to what the Pharisees say in verse 39. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. 
Now let's keep going. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, Teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them. Tell me, therefore, which, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who he forgave more. And Jesus said to him, You have judged correctly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered in your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom the little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. So Jesus is loved by, by the common people. That's who accepted him in the New Testament. The leaders, those that were supposed to recognize him, thumbed their nose up at him. But those that humbled themselves and were humble loved him. Jesus humbled himself to reach them. But then you had Michal and the Pharisee who refused to humble themselves. They refused to because they were above them and they would rather look down on them. Now let's finish up here. And verse 23, Then Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. So those who humble themselves will be exalted. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. David humbled himself and was loved by the people. Jesus humbled himself and died for us. And we put all our faith and hope and trust in him because he is our Savior, the one we love and cherish forever. And we're going to be able to be with him one day the true God and King of all things. And then we will be able to dance and rejoice with our God. So thank you guys so much for listening. See y'all next time.